I absolutely love Italian food and I really love it with all sorts of wines, but when I have a nice beef course, I love to have Cabernet Sauvignon. So I'm pairing up a lasagna de italiano with a Cabernet Sauvignon. First thing I'm gonna do is brown some ground beef. And we're gonna make this in a really simple style. What I found when I was in Italy, a lot of the ladies in Italy just love using their hands when they cook. So I'm gonna use my hands a lot as I make all these things today. So I'll let that ground beef just kind of go for a little while. I want to render out the fat. This is about an 85%, 15% fat. So while I'm letting that render and brown up just a little bit, I'm gonna make some sauce and I'm gonna make some filling. Let's start off with some filling. I love to use a nice ricotta cheese. Now this is a full fat ricotta and it's one of the 15 ounce containers that you can buy in the grocery store easy to find. You can use a lower fat if you like, but when you're building this lasagna and you see how much cheese, once you have that fat, you might want to just have that fat. So the next thing I need is just a couple handfuls, nice handfuls of mozzarella cheese. Then some Parmesan. Gotta have some Parmesan. It's Italian after all. And then I want to put in some vegetables. This is going to be a little bit heavier than a standard lasagna de italiano where you have just the cheese as your layer. I'm trying to incorporate some great vegetables in here. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of red pepper. Anytime I can add vegetables to my dishes, I do. A little bit of grated zucchini. And this is about one medium zucchini. I have a 10 ounce box of spinach that I've squeezed out from all the water. Just thaw it and squeeze it. You can also use a, a fresh spinach and just steam it up. Just make sure that you steam it and then squeeze it because it would have too much liquid in it if you don't. And I love a little carrot. So this is just one grated carrot. This was a small to medium carrot. It gives it a little extra sweetness and I really like that. And then some parsley and some fresh basil, a little dried oregano because my fresh oregano has died, and just a hint of salt. I've got about a half teaspoon in here. Now let's give it a nice mix. We're gonna get down in there. We really want to get all of those vegetables incorporated with all the cheese. The ricotta is just gonna be this beautiful, nice layer and with those vegetables, it's meatier, it's just fuller, it's got a great flavor. Remember the mamas in Italy love to do everything farm to table because they don't have a lot of refrigeration. They don't have a lot of freezer space. So everything that they do is either going to be dried or fresh or preserved. Let's give our ground beef a stir so that we can brown it on all sides. Mm. You can also do this with ground chicken, you can do it with veal, you can do it with a meatloaf mix, which is usually one third ground beef, one third pork and one third veal or one third lamb. Any of the combinations work great. Once again, let's get our hands in it. So I have one can, this is 28 ounces of San Marzano tomatoes. These are whole great tomatoes that are more in a, a plum style. They're a, a little bit uh, like, a, like a julienne tomato. And I love them because they're really thick. They don't have a lot of moisture in them. So we're just gonna squish those with our hands. No need to use the blender on this. You want a little texture with this sauce. I want to add a little bit of red wine. This is about a half cup of red wine and about a quarter cup of water. That's gonna thin it just enough to cook the noodles because I'm using an oven-ready noodle and with a little extra moisture, they cook beautifully. Now let's go with just a touch more salt. This is about a teaspoon of salt. A little red pepper flake because I do like just that little bit of flavor in the sauce. You can always leave those out if you don't like the heat. But it doesn't really give you a lot of heat, just a good flavor. This is some dried oregano. And then again, some fresh parsley fresh basil, and another minced clove of garlic. Mm. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and just stir that up a little bit. And then I want to add a 28 ounce can of tomato puree. Now this is a little bit thicker than tomato sauce, but it's not as thick as tomato paste. And it gives a lot of body to this sauce. That's why we want to use that little bit of extra moisture with the red wine and the water. You know, when you're trying to match up meat, think about the fat in meat and think about the tannins in the wine. So red wines are going to have tannins. White wines don't have tannins. The tannin comes from the seeds, the pits, and the stems. So if you want something to really fight against those tannins and match those tannins, just really meld with those tannins, go with a nice red meat or with something with a lot of cheese that has a really good butter fat. Now we are just about completely cooked through. Don't worry about browning the meat. You're really just trying to create a nice sauce here. But if it browns up a little bit, that's okay. You're not going to ruin it. And I wanna just kind of chop through so there aren't huge chunks of meat. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of my sauce to that. And then let's take a ladle and put three ladles of this sauce into my meat. Now this is about an eight ounce, so three cups. Now if you want to continue to cook this down to get rid of all the excess moisture, that's fine too, because we're going to layer this up with a little bit of extra sauce. So if you want to continue to cook it, thicken it, that's fine, but it's not necessary. Now let's go build that lasagna. Okay, so let's get this started. Now this recipe makes enough for a 10 by 14 lasagna pan, a nice deep dish lasagna pan. This is a little bit smaller. So what I usually do is make the whole recipe and then I use about two thirds for this. And the other third, I make a smaller lasagna. I stick it in the freezer or I give it to a friend. So we're gonna start off in the bottom of our pan that I've sprayed lightly with olive oil just one scoop of that sauce, and let's just kind of spread it around. The reason that I do this is because if you start with the noodles on the very bottom, those noodles can burn, and you want to be able to get under that lasagna, lift it without any problem. Now let's lay in a layer of lasagna. Don't worry if these noodles break, that's not a problem. And if you prefer using cooked lasagna noodles, then by all, by all means do that. So it's your choice. Now, let's put in our vegetable mix, the next. I just love this, and it works so beautifully as that layer with the ricotta, the cheeses, the vegetables. Mm, so good. And I like to just kind of drop little dollops all over, and then I pat it down. So again, about two thirds of this. You want a nice layer, but you don't want it to be so thick that that's all you get in your lasagna because you want to really layer it up with the meat, with the noodles, with the cheese. Ah, perfect. All right, so I've got a nice little layer there. So let's put another layer of noodles, and this time I'm gonna go opposite direction. And I do that so that I know everything is covered with noodles at one point or another hopefully at two or three points. There we go. Now I wanna take some of that meat mixture, again about two thirds, and I just wanna ladle that all over. And I'm draining this just a little bit because I still have a lot of liquid in it. At the end, I can always pour that sauce into this sauce and mix it all together. Now let's put on a little more cheese. So this serves as our sauce layer. So let's throw in some cheese. Mm. Nothing like a cheesy lasagna, especially on a winter night. Nice glass of Cabernet Sauvignon. All right, let's layer up a little more. Again, the opposite direction. I love these lasagna noodles because it just makes sense for me. 
sometimes when I'm cooking lasagna noodles, I end up with just kind of a glob in the pan. I'm not very good at that, so these are great for me. I guess everyone has their thing that they're really great at and things that they just don't do quite as well. Okay, now there's another saucy layer. Let's top that with some cheese. And we're gonna do one more layer. Just with noodles, sauce, and the last layer of cheese. All right, and then let's lay this Parmesan on. This is what's gonna give it that brownish crust on the top. Now I want to set my oven for 350, and I'm gonna bake this for about an hour. Doesn't this look great? I just love lasagna. And when I make it, it just takes me back to times with family when we had lasagna, times when I traveled and I had lasagna, times with my students when I make them lasagna. I always did that when we had dessert day and they always looked forward to having lasagna because then they had something to eat before all that sweet stuff. All right. So you want to just cut this in about two and a half to three inch pieces. And I like to use a serrated knife for this. For me, it cuts the best when I'm doing a lasagna because I know that I'm cutting through all the layers and I can kind of give it that little saw method if I have to. And then let's see if we can get a nice piece out. Just look at all these beautiful layers. Oh, isn't that amazing? Beautiful lasagna de italiano. So let's try this with a little bit of our wine. Now I let this sit for about 30 minutes so it had the chance to just sort of blend in the pan. If you try to take it out too soon, all of the cheese just runs everywhere and it's an absolute mess. Okay, so let's try it with this Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. Oh, beautiful. I get a lot of black cherry, chocolate. It's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And with this lasagna, it's gonna be perfect. Oh. Mm. So good, so cheesy. It works so well with this amazing Cabernet. And I know you're gonna love it any night of the week.